We're gonna be fixing the primary complaint on the Steam Deck. It's so hot and loud. Now I don't have a $100,000 CNC machine like Linus to be able to create a hot rod cooling solution for my Steam Deck. About $100,000 worth of SolidWorks licenses. So the way that I have to address the heat and noise complaints on my device is by resorting to normal means. So settling for the best accessible option, we're gonna be putting liquid metal on my Steam Deck to see if we can alleviate some of the temperature issues as well as the fan noise issue, which you can, in case you're interested, simply replace the fan that is included on your Steam Deck with something like the iFixit part because some of the earlier model Steam Decks had a noisier fan. And in case you actually have that one, the new part that's on iFixit should be slightly quieter. But today we're gonna be focusing more on the heat side of things than on the noise side of things. So for the testing, we have my massive Steam Deck, the one that I've been doing all of the testing on, putting a graphics card on, the 20 terabytes of storage, all of that. And this is the one that we will be putting the liquid metal on. We also have an unadulterated, just 512 gigabyte new Steam Deck that hasn't been touched at all in order for us to compare the baseline because I've taken the cooler off of this, even though it does still have the original thermal paste, it actually won't be a direct one for one comparison. So that's why I have the untouched Steam Deck here as well for comparison. But I will say before we get started, liquid metal is dangerous. It can short out your components. So do this and follow this at your own risk, which you know what you should follow today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Autonomous and their dream setups, which we have on showcase here. Autonomous wants to give you everything that you need for your dream workspace. Their idea was to come up with products that would give people a single destination to purchase all the necessary items to build their really cool desk setup or home office. And they have a variety of different desk setup concepts to fit everyone's favorite style. And in fact, that you're hearing it here first, my wife actually just joined the UFD team and this cookies and cream dream setup is exclusively for her. It comes with the ever popular autonomous smart desk core, which my wife loves for sitting and standing to have the flexibility of work. It comes with the Ergo Chair Pro, which has a variety of different customization options to make it so that it's comfortable no matter who's sitting in it. And it also has the TaskPad wireless charging desk pad, which allows you to charge your phone while you're sitting and working. And it also has the Carpio Ergonomic Wrist Rest by Delta Hub, which allows you to more ergonomically use your mouse and feel better at the end of the workday. And my favorite feature, I actually kind of stole this one from my wife. It comes with a two drawer mobile vertical filing cabinet. This is something my office has desperately needed. And so I have started using it for filing away my paperwork because it's just been laying on my desk otherwise. But this setup has allowed me to cater this to my wife's needs. Being able to wrap all the cables through the smart desk core allows me to have a single USB-C cable set up for my wife so that she can just bring her laptop down here, plug it in, and then she's ready to go to start her workday. I've been able to create my wife's dream setup down here thanks to Autonomous, and you can do that too by going to the link in the video description. Check out their dream setups. You can choose from the variety that they have and make it so that you can customize your workspace to fit your needs the way that you've dreamed it would be. Big thanks to Autonomous for sponsoring today's video. So this is not my first foray into actually putting liquid metal on a console. I actually beat Sony to the punch by putting liquid metal on my PS4 Pro, which you can check out that video right up there, which was done completely before they announced that they were putting liquid metal on the PS5. We're also seeing laptop manufacturers switch over to a liquid metal thermal compound in order to help with better thermal transfer, which is how liquid metal should save us here. Because of the heat conductivity on liquid metal is higher than traditional thermal paste, it gets a better efficiency cooling between the SOC and the actual heat sink that comes in contact with it. But a couple warnings, as mentioned, it can short out components because the gallium is highly reactive with everything. It can short out your PC. So again, do this at your own risk. Number two, if you use it with aluminum, it'll actually eat the aluminum and make it so that it dissolves. You don't want to do that. It does also react with copper, but less so. Eventually you'll have to replace it because it'll fuse with the copper, but it's not as dangerous as using it with aluminum. And and thankfully, Valve chose to go with a copper heatsink on the Steam Deck, which will make my job easier. So we're gonna start off getting temperatures and noise levels in order to see what we're comparing everything to. So the differences between these two machines actually isn't all that high. This is the unmodified Steam Deck. And right now we're pulling in 81 degrees on the GPU and about 85 degrees to 88 degrees on the CPU. But the fan speed is about 55 to 5600 
100 RPM, and the CPU's speed is at around 2.9 gigahertz, but the GPU's at 1.35. On the modified Steam Deck, it's actually, the GPU is a little slower by about 100 megahertz, but the CPU is higher by about 100 megahertz with roughly the same fan noise and roughly the same temperatures. Right now, it's running a little lower because this one turned on more recently, but once they level out, they're about the same in terms of temperature and fan speed at about 5,400 RPM. So this is actually a really good starting place. Now let's go put liquid metal on this one. So the setup process is rather easy. Disassemble the Steam Deck, take off the back, and then you have to unscrew this padded cover right here and then get at the underground CPU cooler that's right here. As you can see, it is copper, which is good for our purposes, as I've mentioned. Unscrewing this bad boy. Oh, you should also unplug the battery. That would make sense. I'll do it. I gave it a second thought where I maybe wasn't gonna unplug it. It's not worth the risk. I know I have two Steam Decks, but I already sold one, so I gotta at least keep it in decent shape. Then there's the tape right here, and that should peel off. And now we have the thermal paste that comes with this, and then we have the thermal paste that's actually on the SOC, which we now need to clean up. I believe this Thermal Right Silver King liquid metal compound, I think this might be an alcohol wipe, but I'm just gonna use my paper towel and my alcohol that I have. I've got alcohol. I just got thermal paste all over. Which is the actual issue you're gonna have to look out for when it comes to liquid metal. Making sure it doesn't make contact with any of these capacitors or anything metal because it is highly electrically conductive as well as being highly thermally conductive, which leads to good temperatures, but could potentially lead to a bricked computer. Which is why when you see like Sony put it on the PlayStation or Asus put it on their laptops, what happens is they have it squared off so that it doesn't leak anywhere else. The way we're gonna do it today, look at that beautiful Valve SOC, by the way. Look at that, that's gorgeous says valve. So the way we're gonna compensate by not splooging the liquid metal everywhere is with electrical tape. This is how I did my PS4 Pro. We're gonna do it here. What are valves colors? Black and white? They're all over the place. Are they? They do, they do orange, black, white, blue. Mm. Oh, the Steam Deck's blue and white. Yeah. So we should do blue and white because I it's a colored vinyl electrical tape set. So let's do blue and white for the Steam Deck. That way, whoever gets this next will I'll probably end up never selling this. Oh, that's one thing I forgot. Scissors. We just want the chip exposed, nothing else. Because with the tape, while we're trying to protect, we also don't wanna inhibit the other thermal pads that are on here in order to make it so that we connect everything properly and not, not reduce the heat dissipation on that one. So that's the blue. Let's get the white, good Steam Deck colors. We got the Steam Deck box. Y'all seem to really like that short for some reason. Or hate it. It got a lot of views. I was very confused. Both Kyler and I were like, that's not gonna perform well. It's just Brett talking about boxes. Did you know that Valve ships out different cases depending on which Steam Deck version you got? What did you say? And yet the YouTube algorithm confuses us once again. Let's overlap that tape to make sure that if there's any leakage, it's not gonna touch nothing. Liquid metal makes me nervous. You can, you can really screw up. I haven't yet, but if I was going to, it'd be now. Electrical tape applied. We've just got the SOC exposed right there. Hopefully that would mean when we do the liquid metal application, things should be fine. So now we need to clean off the thermal paste that's actually on the heatsink. Now it's time. Liquid metal, this is the difficult task. It comes out really strangely. It's not a easy like push out. It like beads up, but then you also have to spread it on the chip as well as the cooler to make sure that there's even distribution and that you don't have excess that's gonna kind of splooge out on the sides. So there a better word that I should be using? Let's don't squeeze too hard, Brett. Oh. Let's do two droplets, that's good. And then we can also do a couple droplets here on the actual heat sink. It's not even a pea size amount you're supposed to do. It's supposed to be very minimal and then they give you these Q-tips so you spread it out evenly to make sure that it actually is making contact with everything. And it takes a little bit to get that done because it doesn't like to stick. It's like 
It's almost like mercury in a way and how it actually behaves and gets pushed around. Eventually it'll start to soak in and you can spread it once it gets into the crevasses. And then when it's really shiny all over, you know you're done. I think three dots may have been too much. Sorry, four dots. I put two on here and two on here. I might want to get rid of one of these dots because this is, this is spreading very nicely, covering most of the surface of this chip. I don't know how to clean it up. I wonder if I can pipette it back up. Just suck it. Yep. And let's spread it on the cooler. Make sure we got adequate coverage here. Oh yeah, two drops is enough to give full coverage. This is a very small chip as well. That's a full coverage block right there. That's shiny. I'm done. It's time to put it back on and oof, I didn't break it. Before I put the back cover on, let's just try to turn it on, see what happens. It did make noise, so that's not good. Doesn't need to be plugged in first because I unplugged the battery. Hopefully that's the case. Follow me, Kyler. I'm gonna plug it in. Oh, we've got a charging light. Ah, that's it. Okay, it just needed to be plugged in for its first reboot after having the battery removed. <sighs> I'm not stressed. The back panel is very important for cooling because it helps to direct the airflow. Gotta keep that on to replicate our tests. Good to go. Steam Deck logo. Now it's video game testing. I see this as an absolute win. The modified Steam Deck is noticeably number one quieter, but then also number two cooler. We have actual measurable significant improvement from the liquid metal mod that I applied. So previously this modified Steam Deck was at 81 degrees on the GPU and 85 degrees on the CPU. Now it is at 75 degrees on the GPU and the same on the CPU, but that lower GPU temperature made it so that the fan spun nearly 600 RPM less, which was noticeably quieter and especially after leaving this brand new Steam Deck running, playing God of War for a little longer, the fan actually ended up ramping up to 6,000 RPM. And this one was 1,200 RPM less, which was incredibly noticeable. So big improvement there. As far as clock speeds, the CPU maybe got an extra 100 megahertz at 3.2 gigahertz, which might help to explain why it was running at the same temperature because it was actually pulling out more power from the CPU. The GPU was exactly the same, likely not going to impact the gaming performance on the Steam Deck, but it will impact the livability performance of this bad boy, making it so that it's quieter, it's less noticeable, and hopefully that fan will last a little bit longer because it can spin just a little bit slower. Do I recommend you do liquid metal mod? It's up to you. There are inherent risks to putting gallium on it. But in case you want to see more videos of me tinkering with the Steam Deck, you should go check out this video where I turned it into an entire gaming PC with a RAID card and a 6950 XT. It was wild.